So we are actually cleaning out two pens right now because with breeding season we have two pens put together. So like pen five and six here, you can see Mr. Bully is right there. Um, they're put together for breeding season and then we also are putting the creep pens outside for the calves. We also have to put it <laughs> over there. I'll show you all the things. But because we have two groups of cows put together, they are doing the traditional cow thing in the summer and when it's warm out, they stand in one pen together. So one pen of the two gets wet and it's hard to keep it dry so we're just cleaning out the entire thing once that way they have a dry-ish pen going into prep for them doing that again so just natural cow behavior but we're doing something about it It's slippery. There it goes. This is essentially what they are doing in one pen, even when they have access to both. And there's a couple cows that will come away uh, because the cows, for some reason, like to be in pen five. They get order cleaning, not pen six. So, I don't know. The cows really like that in pen and hang out in the The cows are doing okay, but. It just is so humid when they stand together. It's natural behavior. It's what they do. We have to have two pens together in order to have the bulls work because it's not worth having one bull for 24 cows when they don't have to cover a lot of ground. So Mr. Baldy here has 48, 50 friends to hang out with. But this is what they're doing essentially for no reason other than natural cow behavior. So um, pen three and four are not as bad as it. You can see them over there. They're actually kind of spread out. So. But that's the one like downfall we've really had so far. And hey, hey, that's a newer baby. We only have five left to calve. They're late, so. But the cow is all slicked out nice for the most part. Like this one, right there is real slick. She's slicking out. Sterling's coming to clean. Yeah, there's some dirt work out here. So, um, pen one and two, one is on the that's West. <laughs> West and one and two are together with a uh, cemental bull who's a two year old now. Um, three and four, which three and four are these ones over here. They're with our old man limousine, so our last limousine bull. And then this is five, six, baldy man. He's right there hanging out. Um, and then we do have the rest of our cows out on pasture with their bulls as well. So I think we have what, seven bulls somewhere in there. And next year I will AI more. Hello, thank you for peeing in my video. I love that for you. Um, that one, hold on. That we done. This is where the creep pens are going to be. So we will have them divided into three pens. You can see this little wood door open where there's plywood. That is currently covering the hole of where the calves will come out, only the calves. So right now, if we open this up, the cows will get out. So let's put a pipe across so only the little babies can come out. So with that, um, each two pens shares is going to share a door. So the opening for the creep pens, we'll have three different creep pens out here. Three creep feeders, we have enough of them. But this will get the calves away from moms, out in a drier place they can hang out, eat creep feed. Um, they'll have shade, obviously, like in the afternoon as well, once we get into later summer. So this will be all of that. We're gonna pour concrete, do all the things, put gates up um, on this end, so. Here's the giant mountain of manure that we will have to haul out and stockpile up on the field. Uh, it just makes it a lot faster just to scrape it out and pile it um, when dad has the help here or whoever's cleaning to open gates and such and then he can haul or whoever hauls on another day. So we did scrape the alleyway today. This is pen one. So when I told you pen one is staying dry. Example here, pen one is dry. We did clean out pen two already, which is the next one over there. They have a fresh corn stock bales are happy. So, we had to put up some panels. This is not done yet, so I'll have to show you when it's actually done. Um, the calves have been getting pushed out the bunk because they want to eat TMR. And then this is where they like to go play. 
if it's fine when the corn is only, you know, a foot tall, well, the corn is now almost to my belly button in spots. So, nobody wants to lose a calf that's worth quite a bit of money out in the cornfield or chase them. Because most of them, they like hang out, they get hot, they want a nurse, so they hang out back and they want to come back to their mom, you know? But every once in a while, I get one that's a little bit crazy and they decide they're going to run the wrong direction and they go out the cornfield. But I can see the lovely panels that would be here all the way down. We gotta put more pipes between all these. So you have a pipe every 10 feet or so. Panels, we'll have to put some more going this way. We just gotta put up so the calves would stop deciding to run into the wilderness of the cornfield. So he only has a few more buckets probably full and then we'll go on wrap a corn stalk, put it in there, one or two. And then he will drive by with a bale processor for the rest of the pens. That way they get some fresh bedding. ask questions um i will say this if you're uh, thinking about putting up a barn like this you have to have a bale processor you have to have a bucket attachment like that so like that's non-negotiable you need them so hi you're such a jerk so that's what the bottom looks like it's wet clay and gravel and such um not perfect but this is where it's really usually where, where they walk in first, so put a bail in, go from there. smart little kids that is one thing it does get pretty dusty in here if there's no wind when you bail process depending on your bales but you got the curtain open it goes so <laughs> and we cleaned so you can see it's a little lower to the ground one bale and then we bail processed in so so in addition to <coughs> A bale processor and a uh, grapple bucket. I also believe you should have a calving pen in here. One, drawing pairs up without gates. Two, it's a nice place that only the calves can get into if you open it that way. And they really like it. It's ease of not having to move all the gates, every single pen, just to get one down to shoot. These calving pen. Yes, they cost a little bit, but they are really great things. It is Monday, um, oh gosh, I don't know, 26-ish, somewhere in there. Uh, we are moving a bowl that we have with our heifers in with the barn since we have a bowl that's not feeling very well. So that is happening. Um, they'll be coming down here shortly. We unloaded them, or we load them in the trailer, throw them across the yard because the corn is too tall. And he will be coming down. He's talking through the fence to our baldy bowl. He's just a little baby, so. That's what we're up to. Hold the bull from the heifers. So that means heifer breeding is done. If they're bred, they're bred. If they're not, well, they're gonna become beef. Look at him strut his stuff. Come on, that's not your girlfriend. This is your girlfriend's. Go, buddy, go.
38 must be in heat. Maybe. This is our two year old that's not feeling so hot. We've had that look at him. Not really sure what he's got going on. So, I don't know. Originally, we were going to put the bowl in this pen with the old man there. But, hello. Yeah, you're broad. Here we are. Sorry, the little way that went. He's not too much smaller for being a yearling. So he should play catch up in here and <laughs> be good to go. Clearly I did not finish this video on the same day, but uh, we are going to clean the alleyway, so we do that every other day or so, somewhere in there. The cows are crying, because it's good that they're started up. Um, but the pens are doing better now that we clean those two out. Uh, we bed in the morning now, so that way the bedding gets fouled up a little bit better because the cows are standing here to eat, and then the calves actually get out of fighting for the bunk and they go eat corn stalks. So we've kind of been good. Uh, we're gonna get concrete poured for our creep pens for the calves to so eat creep feet outside. Otherwise, it's going well. But as I mentioned, if you're gonna build a barn like this, you need to have a bale processor. We have a bale pro from Highline. Absolutely love it. It's the CFR 650 Top Gun. <laughs> not the equipment person. Um, and then you do need that grapple bucket as well. So those two things, obviously I recommend like a hydraulic chute and good feeder wagon and all that stuff, but those are like the two have to have things to do the, to do the bowl, to make it work um, and survive. So we have had the bulls in with the heifers for about 48 days now, 45 days was on Friday. Kept them in because I was gone. So they got the extra couple of days to get anybody that's bred. And if they're not bred now, they're SOL essentially. Um, and we had them in earlier, so they'll start like the 20th-ish of February. And then we have the cows starting into different groups, so those both have been in for about 28-30 days now. We'll keep them in, in the barn for about 65-70 just because we have had some bull issues. <sighs> All that fun stuff. And then the ones out on pasture, they will stay in until we bring home in the fall. So if there's a couple weight breads, they'll be out on pasture. Otherwise, if it's not dry, right away in those first 60-70 days or so, they will be cold this fall since poke cows are worth a lot so that's the plan there um about two wolves this year very glad we did since our two-year-old's not feeling very well and the 10-year-old did that's phenomenal he should be fine he's been really busy a lot of cows in here at the same time we put baldy with the most cows in here and then the ones on pasture seem to be doing just fine so fingers crossed we have good breed backs um in that department and then we will probably check those peppers in the back we just pulled this bull out of in the next uh, probably like 45 days or so that way they're at least far enough along that it's really easy to ultrasound i ai'd two cows one of them is the old lady so more on that coming but otherwise that's kind of like what's going on in the chaos of everything we love the barn obviously it doesn't come without learning curves <laughs> especially the the pen outside and getting the creep pen stuff figured out and the cows doing it cows do when it's hot outside and just congregating together and making one pen wet it's getting better now that they're getting bedding in the morning it actually helps them spread out so that's been good. That corn is taller than me now, so I'm glad they're in a barn and not somewhere. Hopefully, they can get out. Not that wood. There's no wood here. <laughs> <There's nothing. laughs> but I'm going to show you the heifers and take a little walk. Go further. So this will be a separate video, um, but we have our everything set up to pour concrete for the creek pens outside. At least this first pen. So wait on a day to do that. So we do have a couple, um, a handful of cows in here. Some of the younger calves, cows that haven't calved, are in that pen with my old lady. There's a little of the feeder wagon. We got a well done, fix stuff, feed and such. Fats are getting pretty chunky, so I'll give a little update on that. We actually just started keeping heifers back in the last, last year was our first year. So it's kind of a funny thing. And last year I had my old lady with them the entire year and they were super chill. Um, we walked back here today to come with this bull and I was like, oh my gosh. Moon needs to come in here because they were a little nuts when I got in there. So here's the heifers, they're in this back shed so they kind of <laughs> don't get looked at super often, which, I mean, you feed obviously, but that's it. Um, so I've already have green tag, obviously that's how we kept them separate when I came through um, at processing when they get an implant. So we have quite a few home ones in here. The red tags with the green tag are my parents' calves. And then any of the blue tags, which you can't see any right now, are my own. That one without a tag is my bottle calf fail that I couldn't let go. That's F8. 
There's a couple um, really nice ones that came on a truck that we kept back. There's a blue round there. Don't ask. I just want a blue round, so that happened. And then there's F.A. So hopefully she's bred because she'll be two in August. So she'll be pretty two and a half when she calves, which would be nice, actually. So we'll see. But <laughs> DNA tested her. She's actually 100% Angus. <laughs> and she's an oops, so I have no idea how that happened. But we'll see what happens. Hopefully we at least have, I think there's 22 back here. It's not a huge group. Hopefully at least 20 of them are bred. If that boy did his work and we'll have 20-ish heifers calving next year. So there will be a couple of cows that can go earlier. Otherwise the rest of them will be as we go into March, but December is in February. There's the fat truck things. They're getting big, <laughs> but we should start shipping in August. So yeah, heifers are over on our side. Over there, there's moon. Doing moon things, yelling at me because I haven't fed her yet. <sighs> Other than that, I need to do a crop update. I know videos have kind of been few and far in between. There's a lot <laughs> going on behind the scenes right now. I'm trying to play catch up with a lot of things in my life. And honestly, mental health after calving season was not not in a great place. If you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, you you get that. You know that I've talked about it. Um, so if you want to see me more on the regular, other than my YouTubes, I I'm on Instagram every single day, also off my Facebook and my TikTok, obviously, um, Twitter, that's your jam, but Instagram's kind of where I hang out. So, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm out of breath, I'm walking across the yard and talking, but until next time, I'll see you then. I hope you enjoyed watching and you come back more often.